Welcome everyone, another episode of the Your Little Castle Show. Everyone likes the world to be attractive, to be beautiful, to be, a, 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 just makes you feel good. Yeah. When you look at stuff, it's just, that looks right. It, that matches, the colors are beautiful. How, how much, how often we talk about, I need something to be colorful and pleasant and, and beautiful. And uh, it, we have an expert in the building, everybody, and it's going to help explain how they make this happen. Gateway Custom Painting, everybody, uh, based here out of St. Louis. James Dawson is the owner and founder. Interesting story, an engineer yeah. to start as a profession that has his master's degree and said, hey, man, I want to do something different. I want to start my own business. We're going to learn from James today what it's like to go from being an engineer to starting your own painting company. Yeah. Welcome to the show, James. Thanks, Carter. I appreciate it. Well, I, it, like I said, it's always exciting for me to get to pick the brain of some entrepreneurial types. I, I've been that way most of my life, but spent a lot of my time working for other big companies and worked for Anderson Bush for 10 years and a little bit for Citicorp and some other big national companies. And finally, I was like, man, I enjoy, I really want to get down to the nitty gritty helping the smaller businesses and, and get to this whole marketing thing going and make it work for everybody. And uh, it was a big leap at one point, a couple times I've done this. And now we've really got something fun. We get to really display those leaders who were doing the same thing you started at it much we figured out james uh was born when i graduated high school that gives you <laughs> some idea uh or a little bit of our age difference there because uh he may not look uh much older than 32 or in that ballpark but that's about i'm much older how about that <laughs> but uh with with uh, the experience he brings it really makes us easy for us to understand why you've been so successful and we're just happy to have you on the show yeah i'm i'm super happy to be here well, before we get started, we always give a shout out to our, it's all about the house, the home, the family. And so Your Little Castle is sponsored by Carol House Furniture because you like nice things in Your Little Castle, which James will make beautiful for, for you um, and uh, on the inside and out. And then uh, we love our sponsors, the Flowers team from USA Mortgage, again, helping us make this whole thing happen. So with that, let's dive in. Um, one thing you always look for, how good looking is their website? So James has a beautiful website here, gatewaycustompainting.com. And then uh, I'll even put that up for everybody to see. There it is, everybody spelled out on the bottom of that screen there. There's the phone number and uh, your trusted local painting company. Yeah. And how important is that? I mean, I had just been through this and we talked a little bit about this um, situation close to the family here, if you will. And somebody passed and then we had to say hey we got a, this, this house has been inherited what do we do to make this thing look beautiful yeah. and the first thing every realtor came in to tell us to do was paint it you must paint it carpet maybe yeah. flooring maybe but painting for sure yeah. and that will help make the house look great tell us why that's so important and why you get to do what you do and love what you do well i mean one of the things why it's so important when you're trying to sell a house or you know upgrade it at all is just People are visual, you know, they come into their house and, and they see things that you haven't seen while you're living there. You know, maybe there's some smudges on the wall, maybe they don't like the color and, you know, so kind of creating a blank canvas for them and making it nice and fresh and new, you know, is super important for you know, someone coming in to buy a house. But just in general, you know, people like to customize things. You mentioned, you know, they like color and, you know, making it their own. If the show's called Your Little Castle, you know, you want to make it your little castle not someone else's little castle you, you see what he did there everybody he's <laughs> he's makes, hitting on all the right points that's true and you yeah. do that by doing so for us another thing i'll throw out there as a matter of this we're getting into the, but it was like we could sell the house without doing those upgrades yeah but the first thing they were going to do is make those upgrades anyway yeah. they, they actually the house has been sold and they haven't moved in yet because now they're going to make all those upgrades so it was like do we do it for them or do they do it themselves they paid a little bit less but now they're going to spend that money right and rightfully so because they want to have a house that looks beautiful and it needs to be painted exactly. accent walls all that kind of neat stuff so tell me then james give us a little bit i gave you a little bit of the in intro there tell it how did you get into this why did you decide to make the leap to start your own company as a painting company? It's a great question. Um, as you said, you gave a great introduction of my background and being in engineering. And you know, most people, when I say that, they say, ah, those things, those <laughs> don't really go together, do right. they? And you know, you're right, they don't really go together. But um, you know, coming out of college, my wife and I had a lot of student loan debt. And uh, so we, we started this on the side. I was working weekends and at nights um, to help pay off some of that student loan debt. And 
you know, I tried to take the professional services world and apply it to the home services world by, you know, standing behind your work, doing the best job that you can, you know, being honest and, um, you know, using good products. Those were all super important in the engineering field. And so I think people took notice of that and really appreciated it. And that's, it's just kind of snowballed from that point on. And, uh, you know, to the point where I had to make a decision between staying with engineering and that career or, you know, starting going full time into this and growing a team and taking on all the new challenges that come with, you know, a growing company. And I decided to, to take a risk on myself and why not try it when you're young and, and see if it works out. You make a great point there. And I didn't realize what I was getting into. Things happen by accident sometimes when I said your engineering background. But yeah, that gives you that more of that critical and an analytical brain yeah and when you tie that in with the artistic those two need you got to have an equilibrium there right you, yeah how many ounces and what shade and how do they blend and does it fix and work how, why do you think that's such a good fit with your with your background that has allowed you to to start such a, a, an exciting company well most of painting comes with analytical prep work you know the setup of the job is 80 90 percent of the actual painting work that does take skill you know and and straight lines you know engineers like things straight and organized and and uh, i enjoy that part of it as well but you know there's a lot of you know process within the painting just like there's a lot of process within engineering i start here and i have to follow this process to get to the end to do engineering work we have to start here with painting and do a process to get to the end um, in painting as well so you know whether that's you know coming in and masking all the floors you know like you were saying <laughs> replacing floors are expensive you don't want to have someone paint and then you end up having to also replace <laughs> right. the floors yeah you know that's not a good deal um, so following that process from beginning to end you come you mask the floors you know you you fix all the holes in the walls you know there's a process a b c d and so I, okay. I liked that, being able to do a whole process from beginning to end, regardless of what project we're working on. Yeah, because when you mentioned painting to somebody, you're like, oh, it's artistic and beautiful and, yeah. and charismatic and, and exciting and it makes you feel good and all that. But there's a system you've got to follow here because, mm -hmm. like you said, from step one to step two and then the hurdles in between, you got a hole in the wall. As a kid, I may or may not have put a hole or two in the wall yeah. at the parents' house. And then how do you make that look like new and make it look great? And especially if somebody's coming into a new house, if they, they don't want to see all this stuff left over from the, uh, the old and, and nothing wrong with whatever their historical stuff was. But when yeah. there's damage or just things aren't aesthetically pleasing, you got to have a system to put that in place. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good stuff. Uh, is there a personal hobby or something that led to this as a kid and you were like, you know, this is this is going to lead to something, but you can see the way your mind essentially developed to, to come into doing what you're doing now. I don't know if there was a hobby necessarily, but, you know, when I was growing up, my parents never hired anybody to do anything around the house. Uh, my grandpa, he's from Iowa. He was a farmer for a long time. And so, you know, they just did everything. Okay. And so, you know, that may have been part of, you know, the... the the child labor, you know, <laughs> for lack <laughs> well, of a better term. In our youths, we would do things where we just, the mom is like, you're going to help clean up this mess. You're going to help us move these yeah. bricks. You're gonna, and uh, part of where you picked up from that and it developed a little bit of your interest or, or at least your, what you learned, what you were good at, I guess. Yeah, you get, you gain some confidence in yourself. You know, there's, you know, a lot of things out there that you may be completely capable to do and you just don't have the confidence you know, to even try it or you're scared of messing up. And, you know, we got to learn the hard way, I guess, you know, by making mistakes. And, and so I've got good confidence in being able to do those things and became a little handy along the way, which is nice uh, because, you know, the, the labor prices and material prices keep going up. So if I can fix things, then that's also a big plus. Couple big points made there. Confidence. Yeah. That's how key is that? Because if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't, feel as though you can accomplish the goal, you're never going to get there. You mentioned that yeah. a couple of times, but building that confidence. We talk about that all the time. I work with a lot of kids at different organizations and we give speeches about believing in yourself and having that confidence. But yeah. you think you developed that kind of early and it's helped you to start a successful business as a young entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's helped me start a business, helped me get through engineering school, helped me, you know, have confidence in myself even going through all the engineering school to say, I, 
I'm going to throw this out the window kind of in a way and, and start something completely different and, you know, having confidence that you could make that happen as well. So, well, yeah. great feedback and something we obviously believe in is a, a, an essential for the success of anybody on this little planet. How long have you actually been in the business? You started this company back in 2018. Is that right? 2020. So January okay. right. 7th or January 9th. Uh, 2020 is when we officially, okay. you know, registered with the state of Missouri as, right. as a business. Where did I get 18 from? So 18 is when I moved here. That's when you moved. Okay. Yeah. Originally from the other side of the state. Yeah. And uh, go Chiefs, right? We go Chiefs. Getting ready yeah. for the Super Bowl this weekend. Absolutely. And and then took the leap and said, engineer. What got you to St. Louis? What? Why did you decide to come here? Yeah. Let me. I'll go back a few more years okay. um, from before 2018. So I graduated in Kansas City. In 2010, moved to Columbia, Missouri, went there for engineering. And uh, we, I went to my undergrad and then my master's, graduated in December of 2017. And then my wife is from here, so we moved out here okay. um, after we had gotten married that previous summer in July. So, yeah, that's what Co brought me out here. <laughs> okay, a couple years in the business, and then you said, or as an engineer, I guess, and then yeah. were you with somebody else helping to develop? engineering exciting stuff there what were you doing as an engineer i was doing highway bridge design right. kind of all over the country i did a lot of work in dallas did some work here in st louis um, did some work out in california as well just doing highway bridge design and uh, mostly you know in an office and then when COVID hit in march of 2020 you know i moved back out in, into my house you know well, okay. and doing work from there so that was that was right all around the same time, January of 2020, started the business, March of 2020, COVID hit and had to start working from home. So, okay, yeah, very, very interesting time. And you stuck with it, made it through all of that. And, and yeah. obviously here we are four years later now, you're getting on close to the, the half decade mark. Yeah. And they said, once you've made it a decade, you've made it. Um, yeah. But how, what has the trajectory been here? I'm going a little bit off of some of the normal things, but when you started this and you went through the craziness that we had i like to say yeah. um and, but did you continue to grow through that and you stuck through it and, and saw where you could fill the gap and, and and essentially what was it that you think it made your success through that yeah i think it's going back to kind of what i was talking about the processes in place you know building doing everything right is kind of that first step you need to be able to follow that process to do a good long lasting painting job but the same thing is true for lots of different areas of business you know that process of starting and then continuing to grow on the little steps every single day you know that that's kind of what the how you grow a business is not the necessarily the huge leaps that you're taking or these big massive events that okay I became successful today but yesterday I wasn't you know it's that consistent small things building on top of each other over the years that has really gotten us to the point where we're at. And we have continued to grow every year, which we're super thankful for. Another key note there, but take note everyone. When I break out the big pencil here, that's when you should write this down. Baby steps, how do you, how do you eat an elephant, they say? Yeah. One bite at a time. And not these tremendously huge revelations that ch change the world, but just consistently improving and little things you learned every day you talked yeah. about. That's, that's, that's important, I think, for a lot of people to understand. Yeah. Or with a tribe, you know, you could use a tribe of, of people to come help you eat an elephant, you know, right? <laughs> That's ah. kind of the stage I'm in now, helping building a team, so. building a team. Yeah. yeah. Growth of the business, something that uh, obviously is key to uh, sustaining and going and getting bigger so you can help more people yeah. and bring in that process that you've developed. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, you've got a lot of uh, back end knowledge. What do you think? Is, is this the engineering coming through again? It helps you to, to dig through and decipher or training your professional career? Yeah, I think. I think it's a culmination of just life in general. You know, I've got different backgrounds than everybody else does. And, you know, some of those have helped me in different areas of business. And, you know, I've had a lot of really great mentors along the way. And, you know, just curiosity, continual, continual learning. You know, if I, if I came into the painting world and I thought, man, this is, this is so much easier than engineering. And, you know, you come into it and you think that you know everything, then, you know, you're probably going to fall on your face. You know, it's that continual learning, you know, talking with mentors, growing that way, um, building relationships with people. There's there's so many different aspects of a business, but um, those are probably just a couple of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. 
Well, we're getting a lot of great information here from an expert who's made it happen and been very successful. And it's just interesting to hear the, the aptitude and the, and the method you've taken to get there. So um, we're going to go over some of the reviews James has gained from his business, and they've done an incredible job. And an overall average, it's amazing and, and just putting in the work to make this happen. What about your business fuels your passion? I mean, what is it that helps you to wake up every day and say, I love what I'm doing and I want to keep doing this? Yeah, I, I think it's really the stories that we hear from our clients of, you know, what was your previous experience with using your last contractor? What was it like working with the previous painting person or handyman or something like that? And um, you'll see it all through our reviews that they're just, this was so much better than I expected. This was a lot better than my last experience. You know, they did a great job. We we love our house now. We love driving up to our house every day. We we love going into our kitchen. You know, it's, you know, bringing smiles to people's faces. And I mentioned it a couple of times, but just like building our team and helping them grow confidence, helping them learn new skills. You know, we have some incredibly talented trace people that work with us, but also just, you know, we're helping build them as, you know, good, good husbands, good wives, good community members, you know, and, you know, approaching things from that direction not just being a good painter but you're contributing to the overall st louis community i think that that is you know something near and dear to my heart that's starting to become more of what helps me get up every day yeah that that's uh, that's that's uh, a lot said there because it it just seems to so many people they kind of just wake up every day and they're like i guess gotta go do my job yeah but when you have a passion for it you really like you feel like you're contributing to the community and making a difference that's that's really uh, something that sets you apart, I think. Let's take a look here. We've got some reviews. We're going to put these up on the wall. I've got the wide angle. We've got our mini cam. This is actually a drone. Look, it's a 4K camera, though. These cameras, technology is always improving. But as you can see on the wall over to James Wright, I've got a list of reviews. You guys are based out of St. Louis. you got that City Place office. That's a dynamite location. I know lots of successful businesses. Microsoft have been there for many years. I know they, I think they have a little bit of a footprint there, but you're, uh, you're right there where the professionals hang out. Yeah. And look at these reviews, everybody. And when you're talking about what people do to make a difference, there is a great example. And when you've got 119 reviews, holy, I like to say, holy Manoli, um, you've done an incredible job to help a lot of people because uh, they wouldn't write these kinds of reviews if they didn't believe and what you were doing. So uh, I like to also then share a little bit of uh, of some of the specifics. So we, you've got a, a few reviews that people took time to write that really kind of stand out. And so I'm going to bring a couple of those up here for everybody if we can and uh, share with everybody how it is, what it is you did in our community to, to kind of stand out. And when uh, when you get these kinds of reviews, how does it make you feel as a, as a business owner? when you've got people taking the time to write this about you. Yeah, I think I think you hit it right on the head is that people are taking their time to help us and that you know, I think that ultimately goes back to they feel like we've helped them a tremendous amount so that they're going to take a little bit of time out of their day to write us a review. So I, I think in a lot of ways it makes me it reinforces you know, what the goal already was that we talked about, which is making the community better and um, giving people great value. Because you can, you could walk up to a job and, and someone could say, well, I, you know, we're going to do this, we can do this job for a $1,000. And, you know, we, we'd come behind them and, and say, no, I, I think from what you're telling me, what you want out of this job, the colors that you want, how long you want to last, it's going to, it's going to cost $2,000. And then, you know, knowing that you may be more expensive than someone else and then people still going, man, they really nailed it for us. You know, they did a great job above what we were expecting. When those expectations may be already really high, it, it just shows that we're doing a great job in the community. Well, we took a little time to download a lot of great information because we did some research here about our guests and make sure that they know what they're talking about. And this James is, knows what he's talking about. So with that, I'm gonna put up on the wall there. Here are a couple of these, these reviews. William Fox, three reviews, uh, four photos, but seven months ago. Tell us a little bit about what William is saying here. And, and um, if you recall working for William Fox. I th this really just kind of hits the nail on the head of our process that we talked about before. You know, this is, he's stepping us through exactly what we do on all of our jobs is that you know we 
we write a scope of work, we have it all nailed down to the T of like what's going to be done, what's not going to be done. Um, we have a, a free professional color consultation that we offer our clients as well, which he mentions here uh, with our color con consultant, Jessica. So not everybody chooses to use that, but it is an option. And um, let's see. Yeah, our, our site preparation, we've, we talked about that as well, just covering things, doing the right primer, scraping off loose paint, doing all that stuff that really makes the job last a long time. Um, he obviously <laughs> saw all of the, the paint that we needed to scrape off and, and do all the prep and covering things. And, uh, you know, you could see that he definitely paid attention to, you know, how, how many coats we put on. We use high quality paint, you know, to make sure that we can, we can have a good warranty that we offer people. Well, it, oh, is he maybe an engineer? Because you look at the detail he's put in this. He's got steps one know. through six on That's your review. That's a great review. question. Uh, so this guy, uh, William, is, uh, is very detailed. Uh, with that, we'll jump back over here. And you've got Sylvia. Tell me why Sylvia meant something to you. Yeah, I love Sylvia's review because she mentions our team so much, which, which um, is really important to me because, like I said, what – helps me get up every day is that training of our team to create a great experience for our customers. You know, I'm only part of the business. You know, I might be here on the camera right now, you know, but I have a whole team of people behind me that are doing a phenomenal job that are generating, you know, such great experiences for our customers for them to go and write a review. So that, you know, Sylvia, we've worked for twice. This is the second time that we've, we've done a job for them. And, you know, she, she mentioned a few different things that we do really well. We can do repairs and replacement. We do interior and out and interior and exterior decks. And, um, you know, she even mentioned that we came back and we double checked with her and made sure that everything looks great and that she was really happy with everything. So we're very quick to, you know, come back if something is wrong and fix it and uh, make sure that you're hundred percent satisfied. Well, there's a hundred, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip over here one quick to your reviews. There's 119 reviews. Two of them you, you, you mentioned, I didn't see, I'm like, where do you have, everything's a five. You had two that were fours. <laughs> the yeah, rest I think of them so. were fives, <laughs> pretty amazing. But yeah. the average still ends up being 5.0 because yeah. you got 119 reviews. So you got a lot of reviews there as well. Talk about this next review where I'm gonna put up on the wall for everybody here. That's Leslie Pate. Yeah. Did I say her name correctly there? Take yeah. a look at that, everybody. Yeah, we've. this is our third job that we've done with Leslie. She, um, on, on three separate houses, actually. So they had a primary house, they had a rental house, and then they moved and, and moved into another house after that. But we did a little bit of everything for them. We've done, you know, we've done high, um, 30 feet up, you know, painting up there. We've done interior, full interior on in their rental house. We went over to their uh, brand new house where they had moved in and they had all their stuff in there. And so we had to cover everything and cover the floors and the furniture and all that and do the whole shebang. So they got to see really all, a lot of our processes of, okay, how do you handle outside? How do you handle inside? How do you handle a rental property where, you know, maybe you don't have anything in there, but they're trying to get the most value out of it. So they saw a few different skews of, of things that we work in. Well, uh, great representation there. And, and there's so many more reviews we could go over here. I put the cowboy hat on because you can see, obviously James and his team are doing a great service to our, help our community. And that's what we're really trying to highlight. Um, I do wanna show some of your work off and you've got just a ton of incredible work you've completed for a lot of people that obviously were very happy with what you've done. So if you don't mind, James, let's take a look here. We, uh, you had so much work. We, we spent quite a bit of time downloading and getting the <laughs> yeah. files put on the computer so that we could show these. But uh, yeah. talk to me a little bit about what we going on here. I got going on here, I'll, and I'll put this up on the wall over there for everybody to see as well. Tell me what was going on here. What this is? Is this a whitewash? What do you call this? Yeah, this is. Uh, there's a couple different terms for it. There's whitewashing. There's German schmear. You know, there's a couple different processes. This one, if you want to be technical, I'll bring out my engineering background. Is German schmear, so it's a paste that you mix with some mortar and, and put it up on there and, and give that whitewash look. It's just a different product, but we're also a certified Roma Bio users, um, which Roma Bio is a specialty okay. product that is, you know, originally from Italy. It's a lime-based paint that's specifically made for brick to help it breathe. Okay. You know, 
you may have driven through St. Louis and seen some not so great looking houses that have been painted and then the paint's peeling off and it doesn't look that great behind it. Well, the this lime wash paint or lime based paint was made to, to bond with that brick and not just sit on the surface. So it lasts a whole lot longer and um, you know, you're not gonna have the same issues with it peeling later. That's important too, because nobody likes to have to pay for painting twice, you know, no. every five or seven years. This is something. How long would a, a paint job like this last? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Okay. Very important. That's cool. Nice work. Well, let's continue on here as we look at, there's a couple other pictures of that same job, different angles. And uh, you can see how beautiful that looks. That's cool. Tell me here, this, is, this looks like a big job you did. Tell me what was going on here. Yeah, this was, this is our biggest project to date, actually. Uh, there was a, a condo community in uh, North University City. It's, it's actually two whole buildings that had over 200 condo units within it. And uh, it was changing owners and they were rebranding and they wanted to, to do completely new colors throughout the whole thing. And uh, so they, they got quite a few quotes from different companies and they decided that they were gonna trust us to that project. And you know, we got it done on, on budget, on time, on you know, all of that stuff. And they were, they were super happy with how it turned out. And we got some great pictures at the end that I really like. I, I think it was uh, really cool. It was just a single, very dirty gray, white color. I, I'm actually not sure if it was gray or maybe it was supposed to be white and it was just dirty. But yeah, now they've got a whole brand new updated building and they're renting it out now. And yeah, it's, it's that's a lot, a lot of, work. of work. 200, 200 departments, 200 condos, 200 condos. Yeah, okay. we just did. We didn't do in inside the condos. We did all of the main hallways, but you saw how tall those were. Some of them are 25 feet tall. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> just the hallway. So it was there was a lot of preparation that we had to go into it and and dealing with tenants that were walking in and out of their condos while we were painting. So it was a lot to take on. Looks great. With that, we've got another, this was a cool video. You, lots of, James is so well prepared. He's got so much information. I'm going to bring this up on the wall. Tell us what's going on here. This is somebody prepping uh, to get ready for the paint that they're going to do, right? This shows yeah. how much you care so make sure you don't ruin the carpet. Absolutely. I mean, like we said, you don't want to pay for a, a painting job and then have to replace the carpet too or you know go with somebody who doesn't have insurance well the good thing is is that we have both we care about the site preparation and you know having all the right insurance that's needed for running a painting contracting company workers comp insurance liability insurance you know making sure all that stuff is covered so um, this is just a little bit of a look into the first couple of minutes of what we may do on a job site when we're protecting the floor and then after that, you know, we're going to fill holes in the wall, fix cracks, drywall, all that kind of stuff. So this is just really the beginning step, but it really is a super important step in the process that a lot of people skip or they don't think that it's that important. And well, I'm skilled enough, you know, I don't need to do this. I can well, cut in without having to do that. You know, everyone makes mistakes. And so it's good to cover your bases and make sure that you're not making the mistake on someone else's dime. Lots of information, everybody. We're going to dig in some more. Next question we're going to ask on our next show, what is the one thing that sets your business apart? Stay tuned for more, everybody. This is the Your Little Castle Show.